right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we put in a honeycomb shaped packaging material. And with that, we also put in some of our compost from our regular compost pile, along with a lot of bedding. And what we want to do is see how all that's doing and see if the worms are reproducing because we took back their population by about, I don't know, I don't know, maybe a third to a half when we gave some worms to my neighbor so that he could restart his vermi hut. So let's go ahead and dig in here. And I think what I'm going to do is try and go from the sides so that I can see if any of that packaging was intact. Now I am seeing right here, like one of our toilet paper tubes that we put on the sides of our feeding and sure enough, lots of castings in there and we've got some worms as well for some reason they really like to go into these toilet paper tubes so i'm gonna keep trying to dig underneath and see if that packaging is intact now it had all kinds of little places for them to go and i had poured the compost right into it along with some coffee grounds and i think i'm getting something right here Let's look. Oh yeah, it's kind of falling apart. I've got a little bit of the individual combs themselves, but oh yeah, right through there, there's worms in every single little section here. So they certainly liked going in there and exploring it. Now, I don't know how much of this is castings and how much of it is some of the compost that I had in there, but they definitely are going through it and exploring it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of break it apart and let it go in with all the other bedding materials that we have in here. So let's keep exploring and see if we find any of our food that we put in here. And we put in a lettuce stalk, we put in a red onion, we put in some apple, watermelon chunk, banana peel, broccoli stem, a peach, just all kinds of fast and slow food. And sure enough, look at that, another toilet paper roll with lots of castings and worms in it. So I'm expecting to see some of it. And here yet again, another toilet paper roll. I love these things. Just put them in and then they kind of break them down a little bit and the water gets to them. And then you can just rip them up and help them. But they really like to hide in them, it's remarkable. So let's see, now it's been two weeks since we were in here last. So they had plenty of time to kind of explore the food and explore the area. I am seeing a little bit more density. I don't know if that is because they're reproducing more or some of the cocoons have hatched or if it's just because the castings seem a little bit more moist. And I did, after we fed last time, I did put in some water and then about a week later, I put in more water. Now this right here we saw in our other bin is a broccoli stalk. They seem to love to eat the outside or the insides and then the outside is kind of like a little broccoli skeleton that they leave behind. So I'm not seeing any food left over. So that's one of two things. Either I need to feed more or I just need to feed more often. And I think it may be a little bit of both because I've been going about 14 days and that's just too long, I think, for this bin and how hungry these worms are. This right here is that magnolia fruit. I believe that they are still taking apart. So let me mix up this bin and then we'll get back to a feeding zone and I've got a really good feeding for them. All right, so I created our feeding zone and I put a lot of the old bedding in here that hasn't quite been eaten up, all the toilet paper rolls, that kind of thing. And one of the things I'm gonna do is add just a little bit more right here. So there we go, just like that. And here is our special food scrap that I wanna try. Now you're probably gonna see a lot of these from all of us worm farmers because Halloween was just a few days ago, and this is my first time putting in a pumpkin stem. I'm not gonna name any names, but she is my wife, and last year, she threw away all our pumpkins. I was so disappointed I didn't get to put them in for our worm bins. Probably mad at me right now for saying that. But we're gonna give this a try, and we are gonna see if we can get this to disappear within the year. Yes, it could take up to a year. So let's go ahead and add more of our food. So here's the rest of the food that we're gonna add, and I will decide as we go how much of it I'm actually gonna use. But this is a little bit of a disappointment here that I've wasted so much celery. And celery is one of those foods that kind of goes pretty quick. So it seems like I'm adding a lot, but I bet you by the time we come back in here, most of this will be gone and maybe have just some of the stringiness of it. Some more fast foods are like these lettuce stalks. Apple's a little bit slower. Banana peels go pretty slow. Unless you have a lot of worms and few banana peels, but we've got a lot of worms and a lot of banana peels. And I'll just put the rest in there like that. So there is our feeding. And now let's add some amendments. 
So the first one I'm going to go with is some of our used coffee grounds. And this is just a good way for me to dispose of them and get the nutrients from the coffee beans into my garden. So if you drink coffee or tea, go ahead and put it in your worm bins. Next, we'll go in with some of the worm chow. And this is just expired grains, that kind of thing from my pantry that I grind up in my magic bullet blender. And then just add very sparingly to my worm bins. And then finally, we'll add a little bit of pulverized eggshells. Worms have gizzards in their digestive tract that helps them to grind up their food and make it smaller. So I just rinse off our eggshells, let them dry, and then again, put them in my magic bullet blender to grind them up. So let's go ahead and top it off with a little bit more shredded cardboard. There we go, that should do. And then what I like to do is make sure that I cover it up with the remaining bedding and castings that we have in here. Now you can see I've got a lot of dark, rich castings in here. I have not harvested this for a few weeks. Usually I harvest every time I feed, but I've been trying to build the bin back up. So I think next time we'll be able to harvest and probably get anywhere from three to five pounds of castings out of this. I treat this large 20 gallon fabric pot worm bin as a continuous flow bin. So I really like it because I can get castings out of it anytime. So I think that will about do it. I hope you're having a great day. Oh, we got a frog. <laughs> We got a frog in here. Every once in a while, I get a little critter in here, and there is a frog, a little baby frog hiding out in the worm bin. So I'll go ahead and release him. But anyway, I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.